Through that door is a 3D print from that generates six figures of income. People ask me all the time, Sam, what does it take to be successful running a 3D print farm? I'm gonna go over five things that I wish somebody had told me when I was starting out in my journey with 3D printing that hopefully you can use to jumpstart your journey. Let's get into it. First thing we're gonna talk about is the printers. You gotta have them to run a 3D print farm. I currently operate six printers in my farm. I have one Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon with the AMS for $1,500. I have a Bamboo Labs P1P with the AMS for $949. I have a Bamboo Labs P1S with the AMS for $1,049. And I have three Prusa Mini Pluses that all retailed for $459. My total outlay of printer costs right now is just shy of $5,000. I know that may seem like it's a big number and it's expensive, and it is. 5,000 in machines is a lot. However, I didn't buy them all at one time. You can buy them progressively as you scale your print farm. You start with one printer, you start doing sales. The more sales you get, you bring on the second printer, you bring on the third printer. So your expense for the printers grows with your revenue created from your print farm. You don't need to just outlay 10,000 worth of cash just to start your business, which to be frank, in many industries, that is the case. And that's one competitive advantage 3D printing has is that it has a low barrier of entry. You can start with one printer and scale from there. Insight number two, you don't need 50 printers to run a successful print farm. As you can see here in my shop, I'm running a six-figure print farm business with six printers, three of which do about 75% of all the printing in the print farm. The key here is to find products with high profit margins. A benchmark that's used in the industry is something called profit per printing hour. Essentially, how much net income do you make for every hour that that printer is running based on the product it's printing? The industry norm, I would say, is around $3 an hour, though some of my best products are at $9 an hour, which means for every hour my printer is printing that product, I am net income $9 an hour. Obviously, the bigger the number, the more income you're gonna make and the fewer printers you can have to do it. There is not a one size fits all for a 3D print farm though. I operate six printers. There's many farms that operate 50, 100, 200 printers, and they can be just as successful, if not more so, than myself. However, what these farms do though is typically they are a lower profit margin with higher quantity. And they are also often looking for contract work. They wanna find a business or maybe somebody with an idea that needs a large quantity of one thing printed. Say 3,000 of a widget printed. A farm like this can come in and say, yep, we can print all 3,000 of those widgets in four days and we are going to charge you our cost plus $2 a widget. The profit per printing hour on something like that is probably substantially less than what I charge per hour. However, because of the quantity, a farm like that can generate thousands of dollars of income in a relatively short amount of time because of the amount of printers they have. However, like everything, more printers, more problems. You will have more maintenance, you will have more breakdowns. So it's much more a labor intensive farm to operate because of the sheer quantity of printers you have. Our third thing, you don't need to own the designs you sell. This is something I did not know about and didn't learn until I got well into my 3D printing journey and operating my 3D print farm. You do not have to be the sole owner and designer of the models you print and sell. There has been a whole industry developed around this idea of licensing 3D models to print farms and just general 3D printing people with the sole purpose of printing that design and then selling it to an end customer. How this works is typically a 3D designer will curate their catalog and they will post it somewhere like a patreon.com or a printables or things.com and they will sell access to that catalog to users like myself or yourself with a 3D printer. The typical cost for this is around $10 a month though it can vary from designer to designer. And for that $10, you will get access to their catalog where you can print their designs 
And the most important part though, is it typically comes with a commercial license, which allows you to print those designs and then resell the actual physical design to the end customer for profit. This is actually a business model that we have brought in house here at 3D Design Bros. We are now currently licensing our catalog of our original design products to users like yourself in an effort to give you guys a benchmark to start your journey with. This is not intended to be the only products you sell. It's intended to be a starting point where you can open a shop with 30, 40, 50 products that have good sales history that you can then build on with your own designs or other curated designs that you add to your shop. If you're interested in that, you can check the links in the description below. We have them on Patreon or Thanks. Either one works. All the models are cross posted on both. Insight number four is a doozy. It caught me by surprise when I got started, but shipping supplies will probably be the most expensive part of any order that you send out. So when you get an order, you have all your costs associated with that order. You have the plastic costs, you have the maintenance of your machine costs, you have your advertising costs, you have your listing fees and your selling fees and all these fees that are associated with the cost. And then you have the box, the bubble wrap, the paper, whatever you need to actually package that order and send it out. That material will most likely be the most expensive part of any of your orders. One tip I can offer on this though, I used to buy my boxes from a company online that shipped out of California. I then switched to Uline because they were closer to me and it was a little bit better price, but I still had it shipped to me. I learned through some research though, cardboard boxes, packing tape, packing paper, regular paper, is a huge business. Almost every business in America needs those things. Even if they aren't shipping product, they probably still need boxes, they probably still need tape, they probably still need paper just to run their business day to day, which means companies that supply those things are many. And I was able to find a company within two minutes of my house that not only beat Uline prices, they allow me to pick up if I don't have an order that constitutes free shipping, I can drive to the warehouse, they'll have it stacked ready for me, I can grab it and go. It saves me time and money, allowing me to drive my cost down, which lets me sell my product for a better price to my customer. Fifth insight I can offer you guys, which is probably the most important one if you plan on selling products online at Etsy, Shopify, Amazon, places like that. Pictures are important. I see too often people set up their print farm, they start printing models, they get excited, they want to get the listing on Etsy right away, and they skip out on the picture part. They take just quick pictures with their iPhone, oftentimes with the model still on the printer, and they post it on Etsy and they wonder why they don't get any sales. People buy with their eyes first. You gotta have good pictures. So take the time, set up an area where you can take consistently good pictures. Often the reason why people don't have good pictures is one, they're excited to get it on there, but two, they don't have a great setup to take the pictures, so it's always a hassle and a burden to get the camera out, to get the lights out, to clean up behind the backdrop, to get it all ready, and they end up getting lazy and they don't do it, and they just go, ah, this will be good enough. Maybe I'll you know, get a few sales from it. Don't convince yourself it'll be good enough. Take the time to take good pictures, get an area set up with a camera, with lights, where it can just stay set up so you can take that new product, plop it down, take good consistent pictures, because I'm telling you, it's just like YouTube thumbnails. People buy with their eyes first. If you don't have a good picture on the listing page, people are not gonna click on your listing and you're not gonna get the sale. We just went over five things I wish I had known when I was starting out in 3D printing and operating my 3D print farm. If you wanna see behind the scenes of 3D Design Bros and our print farm, make sure to check out our YouTube shorts here where we do daily videos showing what we're working on and all the behind the scenes action. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.